What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to talk about the wearability of older shoes. So this is a common topic that comes up, the question, is this shoe wearable? So we're gonna talk about the sole materials, how you can check if they're wearable, and then the other stuff that often goes overlooked, like the plastic materials on shoes. So for those of you that are new, this is Vintage Kicks Gallery. Alright, we're going to start off by talking about one of the most common materials that's used on soles today, and that is EVA foam. So that's what this is made out of here. This is an Air Max sole. Also can be found on Jordan 3s, Jordan 4s, well actually basically any Jordan besides the 1 and the 2. Um, you name it, EVA foam is on there. So how do you check if something is wearable? Well, let's grab an Air Yeezy and talk about it. This particular pair has already been sole swapped. Why? Because the midsoles literally crumbled. But what I mean by that is you have to ask the right questions when shopping for older shoes. And one thing I want to start off with is the most common thing you need to ask. Is the sole hardened or is it soft? And let's talk about what I mean by that. All right. We've got an Air Max sole here and one quick test you can do to find out right away if this thing's gonna crumble, is push in on it. If it's soft, if it maintains your fingerprint like this, chances are that thing is going to crumble when you walk. I mean, these, whew, they're soft as can be. Now, there is a degree of this. You can still have a firm sole and have it crumble, but generally you can tell just by pushing it in, they just have a feel, they don't, they're not springy, and they almost have a spongy feel to them. The other thing you could look for if they have an air bubble is, is the air bubble cloudy? And that's not always an indication that a shoe's unwearable if it's cloudy, but it's a good indication that there's not a lot of life left in them. So we've all seen the Air Max bubbles, they cloud up over time. That's as everything degrades. So if you're in the market for a shoe, let's say it's 10 years old, there's cloudy bubbles, the next thing you're gonna ask is, is the sole soft? On top of that, there's more than that. You have to worry about the outsole hardening. So let's put this away. And let's grab a Jordan 1, a Sky Jordan actually. So everybody says Jordan 1's are wearable for all time, they're tanks, etc. right? Well, what they don't tell you is that these soles can harden. Hear that? The soles have already hardened on these. So the easiest way to tell this is just ask the seller, is the sole hardened? It should be able to flex. These don't, they're like rocks. If you were to wear these, number one, you're gonna slip because they have no traction, but number two, they're gonna crack into pieces. So you always have to ask that. All right, so these, they came actually in very, we'll call it disguised condition. They looked like they could be worn. The air bubbles were clear, the soles were, you know, nice looking, but a quick firm test, and you could push your fingerprint right into them. Sure enough, they cracked right away, and then look at those air bubbles. So if you see a shoe like this, disregard those cracks, and you see that that, let's say it's from the 90s, it has this style sole, just stay away. There's a shelf life on EVA foam. I would say right now in 2020, if you go back to the early 2000s, very, very dangerous to wear those shoes. They're gonna crumble out on you. Um, it was about two or three years ago on the 4th of July, I wore some 2000 or 2001 Jordan 4s, can't remember the year, thought they were perfect, went out, got an hour into the night, started feeling something weird under my foot, looked down, crumbled. Walked to uh, the cab, the next one crumbled right on me there. You don't wanna get yourself in those situations. But let's talk about some of the stuff besides the sole that can make a shoe unwearable or very fragile itself.
All right, this is an OG Jordan 8, and a lot of the Jordans around this era have pieces of plastic on them, so this has the side panels. I'll tell you right off the bat, if you see that and it's an older model, chances are that thing is going to be brittle by the time you get it, and it's going to crack when you wear it. I really stay away from older shoes with these kind of accents. You see this on Jordan 12s, um, you can see it on the back tabs on 3s and 4s. Heck, we just had to uh, swap these guys right here. So anytime you see plastic like that, just know that it's probably hardened and it's probably extremely brittle. These straps, they can break too. A Jordan 8, if it's an OG, may look like it's intact, but it's completely unwearable, both from the midsole as well as these plastic pieces. Even though this has a nice rubber outsole, the other parts are the weak link with this shoe. And that goes for a lot of other models. All right, guys, let's talk about certain models and certain years that are just prone to having issues, such as the 98 or 99 Dunks. These guys have a lot of problems with the soles hardening. Now, if you find yourself with a pair you didn't know the soles were hardened, there are some things you can do. You can use rubber renew, you can heat them up, you can use silicone. There's a lot of products that can enhance the rubber, but once they hit a certain point, where they sound like rocks hitting the ground and they have no traction whatsoever, forget it, there's no coming back. One good way to tell that if you're just looking by pictures, take a look at the bottom of the sole. If you notice that it's shiny, that's a hardened sole. All right, let's talk about the Jordan 3. Not just 94s, but we're talking about 2001s, 2003s. Was there a 2001? Well, regardless, the older ones. So these have problems with both the midsoles as well as the back tabs. And it's really interesting because if you look at an actual 88, rarely do you see the back tabs shattered. So it has to be something with the retros. I guess they're skimping. Yes, you can replace them, but it's still going to be a lot of work. The other thing is these midsoles, they really tend to go out on the Jordan 3 and the Jordan 4s more than any other model prematurely. I don't know what it is about them, but I've seen pairs from 2013, they're destroyed already. And let's talk about dead stock versus used. All right, let's talk dead stock versus used. One weird thing is with sneakers, the longer you leave them dead stock, generally the weaker they become. And I know that doesn't make any sense, but there is something to be said about wearing the shoe, flexing it, keeping it with temperature changes over time. It makes them more resilient. So if you have the chance to buy a dead stock versus a used shoe, and let's say it's from the mid 2000s, if you plan on wearing it, I generally go with the used pair, the worn pair, because if you do your homework, you check those things ahead of time, it's going to have a lot more life in it than that dead stock pair. The final thing I want to cover is the odd materials that you really have to do research on ahead of time. Sabotage Dunk, prime example. These toe boxes have a tendency of cracking up, they're rubber, they get sticky. Same with Jordan 14s. There's something about the material they used on the foam, the paint, etc., where they get really sticky and gummy over time. Now, all you have to do is ask the seller ahead of time, is this area sticky? If it is, you know it's about to come apart. Or just look, if it's cracked, then you already know. Well guys, hope that helps. You know, if you're in the market for an older pair of their shoes, do your homework ahead of time because the last thing you want to do is get a pair, get them home, wear them, be out somewhere, and they crumble on your feet. Believe me, it can happen. It's happened to me many times in the past. So educate yourself ahead of time and always remember, do the sole swap before you wear it. Don't find yourself in that situation where you get caught slipping. Nobody likes to walk home with the sole in one hand and the shoe still on their feet. All right, guys, have a good one. We'll see you next time.